action. Okay, here's the little gun we were working on yesterday. And unfortunately, it's a little gun, and it's not big enough for what I want. So, sorry if I'm moving too fast, I went and carved a bigger gun. It's quite a bit bulkier, that's what I've really needed than this one here. So this one will look really good once it's uh, put into his hand. Now, I was going to do the... Uh, sights and the handle but uh, I ran out of material this is this is the type of material I use this is just a real thin copper not real thin it's it's stiff but I use it to make uh, well for this size anyway to make the, the details like the caulking mechanism here and probably the sights and things so I have to wait till I get up to Joplin on Thursday to buy me another sheet of this stuff so I can work on these guns. So we're just going to put them aside there for the moment. And I thought what we would do now to keep going on is to go ahead and work on his hat. Oh yeah, I want to show you something. One thing I did yesterday on my arm. First thing I did was position it where I wanted it and then I penciled in a little register mark up here on top so I always line it I'll always be able to line it up at the same spot okay and then down here on the hands I kind of penciled in uh, the knuckles and using a pair of calipers calipers these things which is uh, another real good tool to have around the shop this is going to be in his hand up to the caulking me mechanism which is about right there so I need to make my opening in the hand that wide right there so then I took the arm took that off there and that gave me the distance that I need to make there and then it was easy to get the uh, thickness which is that right there so I could pretty well estimate that so I can go ahead and drill me probably drill me a couple of pilot holes here and here and whittle that out to where you know, the thing is going to come up through the hand like that there. Okay. But I don't want to do that now until I get get situated a little more on you know, my other materials and things like that. Because when we put this into his hand, the sights on the front of the gun here, right in this area here, are going to stick up enough to where I won't be able to fit that gun down through the hand. I, normally I like to make these things to where you can remove them because project things that project away from the carving have a tendency to break off. Not that this is that fragile. It's not because the grain runs down through the length of it. But uh, in this case I'm not going to be able to do that because that sight's going to be right there. It's going to be hard to get it back out of his, his uh, fist. So I'll have to position the gun in place, anchor it, and then I'm going to have to put that side on there. All right? So, that's a problem that's going to come along later. So anyway, what I thought we'd do today is work on the hat. Now, I'm sure I've told you before my favorite artist, Western artist, was Charlie Russell. He was kind of a cocky cowboy, I'm sure. And he wore his hat just like that. That's him there. So that's what I want to do. That's, that's the pose I'm after. All right? Now, you've probably seen this one on my blog. This is basically the same, uh, same head. And this is the type of hat that we want to put on him. Montana Peak. 
That's the one Charlie wore. So, I've cut out a circle. Put tape out here. This is about four and a half inches diameter across the middle. And uh, I'm going to put the, the bill of the hat turned up in front because these guys are riding out on the plains, you know, they're going fast on the horses and just the wind against their faces and everything is naturally going to put a curve on that bill. So uh, we position the head. And that's about what I want right there. Same as in the position that Charlie had his hat on. So, I want that to catch the top of his head and come down just over his ears. Alright, so I've got this done already. And when you're doing these things like this, uh, another reason I like, I like to turn the bill up is I don't like things flat, one, one dimensional. If you put a little twist to it, you know, it, it just changes, changes the whole attitude of the thing. Even though it might be just something small like this, it does change it. And uh, it makes your pieces look that much better. So anyway, when you're doing this, I use the, just a palm gouge mostly on this thing here. And uh, if you carve with the grain, you run the risk of getting splits and things like that in the surface. But if you go across the grain, you'll find... Hmm? You'll find it's much easier to, to carve across the grain when you're doing things like this than it is to come down this way. And most of these little imperfections that you see here, the little tears, those will all be sanded out when you run it through the flap sander. There's a little area that still needs to be cut. <coughs> all right. So let's get back to doing the uh, back of the head here. All right. We'll go over to the bandsaw and do that. Okay. Over here at the bandsaw. Now what you want to do when you're putting this thing in there is kind of, you know, pre-plan your cut. And uh, you don't want to take off his ear. And you want to keep it as flat as possible when you go through the bandsaw. So I'm turning this around to where the bandsaw should come out about right in there. So here we go. And if you get, get, get it a little off angle on his head, don't worry about that. That just adds that much more to it. Hold it steady. Take it through there. Now, this here will give you, you know, the size, basically the size of the opening. Naturally, you'll want to make it a little bit bigger than the crown. And uh, here's a nice piece of wood here that I can use for a crown. So I'm just going to lay that on there. Naturally, there's no pencil there in there. Pencil, pencil, or something. Actually, I'm going to lay that up here. About there. And I'm just going to kind of slope my pencil, which will give me a bigger diameter. And that'll give me the crown of the hat. Make sure your grain's running up and down.
I got the crown of his hat. See? That's just about the right size. Looks like that guy on that commercial where those guys in the olden days were making those big felt hats. All right? And our top of our head is flat. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take the head over and I'm going to sand that off smooth, perfectly smooth on my disc sander. Okay, I've sanded off his head. It's perfectly flat there. Now we want to place this hat on his head and make sure we get it lined up just right. That looks good. I think. About right there. Just make sure. Get his ears to where they're equal on both sides. It looks like it's about it. Now I've drilled me at an eighth inch hole right there in the very middle of this thing, so I'm going to stick my pencil down through there and make a mark on the top of his head, which is right there. And get my drill. Eighth inch bit in it. it back up again. Okay. So what we're going to do now is that we got that, we're just going to take a pencil and draw around this head. Which gives us the outline of the, of the block. And then, one thing I didn't show you was with your calipers, careful that you allow yourself, being as we're going to indent an area for that head, be careful that you allow yourself enough material that you can carve down into this. You don't want to go through it if you... It, that's not going to be good if you went through it. But anyway, I've got plenty of material there, so we're in good shape. So now, with uh, this little gouge here, I'm just going to start going around it. First I start on the line. I'm eventually going to have to go outside that line. And to make sure I've got a proper fit, go back to my little graphite pencil here. Just color the top of his head. And I generally hit the top of his ears too. And then, as we've, I've shown you many times before, you put the hat on. Give yourself a registry mark. So you're right there and right there. But you always line it up the same. And then just give it a little twist like that. And as you do that, as you go along, it's not working so well now because we don't have any indentation there. Once we go all the way around and then carve out the center, then you'll get that outer ring indentation. See, it showed up just a little bit right there, which will steer you to, to uh, getting this head to fit right down there on that hat. 
Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. And uh, to finish up, I'd like to thank those of you who've been kind enough to drop a couple bucks. Some of you dropped a little more than a couple bucks. But uh, we appreciate that. We really do. I don't, you know, sometimes I feel when I ask for these things, like some of these guys you pass at the shopping center parking lot standing at the roadside with a cardboard sign. But uh, I hate to do that. But anyway, we appreciate that and we thank you very much. So, until next time, I'll talk to you later.